some lights are designed just to push out heat. Like these meat lamps. They're great at keeping meat hot. Almost all lights push out some heat. Usually this heat takes the form of infrared light, which is a long wavelength great at keeping surfaces hot. Which sometimes isn't that great, but sometimes, oh, it's real great. In this episode, we're looking at infrared light, more commonly called infrared radiation or just infrared. We are getting far past the visible spectrum now. We are 800 nanometers all the way to a million nanometers. And past that would be microwaves. These longer wavelengths of light actually don't carry that much energy. Compared to the rest of the spectrum that we've already covered, like UV, these photons of light with long wavelengths really don't have that much energy. UV is so powerful it can go in and destroy the DNA of microorganisms. But infrared and microwaves, they pretty much just go in and they jiggle molecules around. When microwaves enter an object, they'll usually penetrate pretty deep and they'll rotate some of the molecules around, like water. They'll spin them around and this creates friction, which creates heat. Infrared is absorbed a little bit faster, so its effects are mostly only seen on the surface. And it is a little less dramatic. It's not rotating the molecules around. It's mostly just stretching them and shaking them up a little bit, which also creates friction, which also creates heat. We saw the benefits of that heat when we were at the buffet line. It was keeping the food surfaces warm. But the benefits of infrared light in a garden, like this, uh, well, those benefits are usually a little less clear. We'll start in a greenhouse. On this side, I have an 800 watt LED light that emits almost no infrared radiation. And on this side, I have double-ended high pressure sodium lights that do emit infrared radiation. And behind me, I have a banana tree. And this leaf and this leaf are both receiving about the same light intensity from the two lights, but the major difference is the infrared radiation. The infrared radiation coming off of these lights is capable of heating up the leaf surface. And in a warm environment, in the middle of summer, increasing the leaf temperature is usually not ideal. Luckily, plants are, are pretty good at regulating their leaf temperature when they're well watered. They will transpire a lot, and all that water coming off the leaves is like them sweating, and it cools the leaves and keeps the temperature pretty similar between both of the sides. They'll maybe be a degree different or exactly the same in high light conditions when it's warm out. Most growers aren't using grow lights during the summer. They're using them during the winter when natural light levels are low and when it's cold out. And the infrared radiation coming off of lights like these can heat up the leaf surface and be beneficial. The increase in leaf temperature can actually speed up growth. A lot of growers, armed with the knowledge that infrared can heat up their leaf surfaces, they use that to their advantage to heat up leaf surfaces in times of need to help speed up that growth. Or if they know that they don't want to heat up the leaf surface, they'll go towards an LED light so they can still deliver that light without heating up the leaf more than they want. So much so much so much oh, oh, now let's look at infrared indoors or in a grow tent. In these environments, most growers are struggling with high temperatures. This tent's at 90 degrees Fahrenheit. So a grow light that heats up leaf surfaces probably doesn't sound too ideal. But like I said earlier, the leaves are really good at regulating their temperature when they're transpiring. So this leaf's at 82, 
even though it's 90 out. But the thing is, the grow lights that emit infrared are usually heating up the grow room in another way. Convection. This is a convection fan heater. The coils get hot and it pushes air past the coils, heating up the air. Well, a light fixture can act like those coils. This one's not too hot, but some of the powerful lights can almost get so hot where you don't even want to touch the, the ballast. And these can contribute a lot of heat to your grow room. One of the classic options for a grow light that produces less heat is LEDs. LEDs are really efficient and they'll produce a similar amount of light as some of the traditional lighting options while producing less heat. Picking an efficient grow light is just one of many methods for controlling heat in a grow room. There's also fans and thermostats and thermostats that control fans, AC units, air-cooled hoods, and then there's the backup measures like auto dimming features or emergency shutoffs of lights and there's a lot of methods. To see some of the cool methods for keeping your grow room cool, check out my cool blog, farmertyler.com. Cool. In the next episode, we look at the third and final fundamental of horticultural lighting, light quantity. If you've been enjoying this series and you still haven't subscribed to the channel yet, maybe you should consider it. I'm Farmer Tyler, and the more you know, the better you grow. This episode was made possible with support from Hydro Farm. In this episode, we saw the Autopilot PX1, the Autopilot Day and Night Cooling and Heating Thermostat, the Autopilot Digital Environmental Control, the Fat Fan 8-inch, the Fat HEPA Intake Filter 8-inch, the Solar System 550, the Active Air 45 Pint Dehumidifier, Thank you, Hydro Farm. You really made some cool science possible.